Okay, hello everyone. Good afternoon from the West Coast. My name is Kristen. I'm from the UC San Diego Office of Admissions. Thanks for joining us today for our Triton Talk. Before we begin, just wanted to go over a few things. Um, this session is being recorded, so please do not share any personal information in the Q&A feature or anywhere, um, any, anywhere on the webinar. Um, also, it is being recorded, so it will be uploaded to our YouTube channel, so you can view it at a later time. Next, um, there's a Q&A feature on the bottom of your screen. That's where you can submit questions to our panelists today. So please do not share any personal information, like I said earlier, in the Q&A feature. You can submit your questions anonymously, and then we'll get through as many questions as we can in the hour that we have together. So now I'd like our wonderful panelists to introduce themselves today. Um, as you can see on the screen, you will be hearing from four undergraduate students who will be able to answer your questions about student life at UC San Diego. So let's go ahead and start with Alicia. Can you please introduce yourself and include your hometown, your major, and your college? Hello, everybody. My name is Alicia. I'm from Eleanor Roosevelt College. As you can see on the screen, my major is psychology. My gender pronouns are she, her, and hers. And also my hometown is St. Petersburg, which is not the St. Petersburg that is in America, it's in Russia. So I'm an international student. Um, yeah, that's about it. Thank you. Let's go ahead and go to Danny. Hello everyone, my name is Danny. I am a transfer student. It's my, I'm finishing up my first year at UCSD and I come from San Diego Mesa College, which was the community college that I transferred from. I am in Ravel College underneath a human biology major and my minor is sociocultural anthropology. Thanks Danny. Sorry Nayeli, I skipped you. Let's go ahead and go with you next. You're fine. Um, hello, my name is Nayeli. I go by um, she, her, hers, Aya. I am uh, from Eleanor Roosevelt College, but I'm considered mirror grown, which means that I've been living in mirror, so I've been immersed in mirror culture. But I am, um, I studied political science. I just graduated um, political science American studies, as well as a minor in education studies and Chicanx and Latinx um, studies. And I am originally from Los Banos, California, which is close to the Central Valley. Thank you. And last but not least, Liz. All right, hi everybody, I'm Liz. I am a third year in Eleanor Roosevelt College. My major is human developmental science with a minor in biological anthropology. And I am originally from Newtown, Pennsylvania, uh, which is just a little bit north of Philadelphia, if anyone is familiar with East Coast geography. Thank you. Okay, so the first question we have here is why did you pick UC San Diego? So let's go ahead and start with Alicia. All right, why I picked uh, UC San Diego? Well, obviously because it had a great program that I was interested in that has a great psychological department. I looked up some classes, I spoke with advisors, and I thought it would be a great fit for me. Also, UC San Diego is very close to the ocean, and I am from a very cold country. I've never really experienced such a warm weather and such closeness to ocean and ability to go to the beach like every day if you want, and just sunbathe. So that was a great option for me, and I thought, that's great. It's both match, a great community, a great program, and also environment. Thank you. Nayeli? Uh, the reason I chose UC San Diego, I actually had the opportunity uh, through one of my middle school programs to actually visit the university. And it was one of the first schools I'd ever visited. I think just being immense, I got to go during a school day and um, seeing everyone just walking around, seeing the campus that is absolutely beautiful, stunning. You can see Liz um, background as Guy's Library. I actually had the opportunity to like talk to students and just get to know a little bit more about UC San Diego. In fact, I got to, I got lost at the university and I got really, really scared. This is me being a sixth grader, not knowing anyone. Um, 
and a student came by to talk to me and was like, hey, are you lost? And I was like, yes, I am. And they um, were able to help me find my group. And I think just feeling that comfortability of just um, asking for help was something that was really, really important to me. And so since then, I absolutely fell in love with the university. Then I got to know that it's one of the best political science programs in the nation. And then just to top it all off, the beach. I am from the Central Valley. There's cows everywhere. I like to go to the beach. And so um, it was just a really nice combination. And uh, that's the reason why I chose UC San Diego. Thanks for sharing, Nayeli. Annie? Yeah, kind of like what Nayeli said, I had my sight set on UC San Diego since 2015. Uh, during that time I was in high school, I'd come to visit the campus. I remember walking away from that campus saying, man, I really love this campus. Um, I really love that the biology department is really good here as well. Uh, I also walked away with very sore legs because the campus can be very, <laughs> it can be very hilly. I don't know how to describe it. But yeah, I absolutely love the weather as well. Um, one reason that I really, really wanted to go to UC San Diego was because of um, the closeness that I had to uh, my grandparents' house. So I was able to stay with them and then just commute to UC San Diego. So that was another factor, but yeah. Great, thanks Danny and Liz. Yeah, like everyone's saying, um, going to San Diego for school is great, being right near the beach, especially coming from Pennsylvania. We have very cold winters. I was not ready for it to still be like 60 degrees in like December and January. Uh, but what really sold it for me when I was a senior in high school, I didn't really know what I wanted to major in or what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to go to college and that was about it. Um, and when I went on tour at UC San Diego, just all of the options that were made available to me um, and I saw that like, even if I didn't know what I wanted, like I came in undecided, there were so many paths in front of me that I could take. So I didn't feel like set in stone. I felt like it was a place that would really let me grow um, in my interests. And I like, cause all my friends knew like exactly what they wanted to do. They had had their school picked out since they were like 10 years old and they were ready. And I was not like that at all. Um, but I'm really glad I chose UCSD. I never would have thought human development would be something you could even major in. Um, and here I am. But yeah, that's, that's how I got here. Great, thanks for sharing. Just a reminder to everyone who's in the webinar, if you want, please submit questions using the Q&A feature so we can answer your specific questions. Um, so the next question we received is, what is your favorite thing about UC San Diego? Let's go ahead and start with Alicia. All right. I, I always have kind of troubles with these kind of questions because I love so many things and I can't pick my single favorite but of course if I were to pick I guess it's community and clubs that it has to offer all of this involvement that we have we have over 500 organizations and clubs and what I like about those is that they don't only provide an opportunity for you to meet new people and just connect with like-minded individuals who are interested in the same things that you are but also it's a great opportunity for you to grow in terms of some kind of features in terms of career or the field of study that you are interested in because uh, sometimes clubs hold very helpful workshops for example there was one that i attended about cv which is a document that you submit like a resume there are also resume workshops and there are like there might be and those are very good in, in terms of information and maybe future exams if you're interested in graduate school research and things like that and I would always tell my parents that, yeah, I've been to the club meeting today and it's very comfortable because sometimes they are, most of them are, tend to be in the evening. So there is a lot of opportunity for you in terms of attending the classes and then going to clubs so that they don't interfere with, with each other. And they ask me all new information that I've learned from one single meeting and it's pretty amazing. Wonderful, thanks for sharing. Nayeli? Um, I think for me uh, now, like looking back at like my four years, I think that one of the biggest things that I've enjoyed about UC San Diego is our college system. As wild as it may seem, the college system really, really helps uh, create those small communities. And so even if you can't join all of the clubs and organizations that you want to, being able to call something like your home and being able to just go back um, whether you're living there or just taking classes with uh, college students who are also 
in the same college as you and you are all taking the same general education, it makes things so much easier to be able to not only like make friends, but create those study groups. If you're someone who loves to study in groups or you want to just be able to take notes with someone, being able to ask someone like, hey, do you mind um, if we like hang out and like study? It really helps um, just because usually you tend to be in the same um, college. But when it comes to like, not only that, um, with your college, you have different majors all over campus and um, it's not just, it's not your majors, not in the same um, college. So, so I'm trying to word this correctly, but um, you have majors represented within all your colleges. And so it makes things so much easier to be able to just um, hang out with people that are from all different walks of life. And I think that's been something that's been really helpful. I'm from a town that's really, really small and it tends to be the same group of people I've known since I was born. And so being able to just go into a um, college where I feel like that closeness with others but also being able to be independent and learn and grow um, with different opinions. I think that's been something that I've truly cherished um, out of these four years and just having kind of that small community feel has been really awesome. Thanks, Nayeli. Anything to add about your favorite thing? Yeah, of course. Um, so kind of like what Nayeli was saying, I really love the campus culture. Um, you always hear about like different things happening on campus. I remember when I was in high school, I would hear rumors about certain schools being super cutthroat. And, and when you go to the library, there would be pages torn out of, the, out of the books because no one wanted you to get that resource. And that had me freaked out. I am a very collaborative person. And when I heard about these things, I was just, I was not having a great time. <laughs> But once I transferred, I realized that the culture is so different than what a lot of people um, believe or even the rumors that get spread around certain college campuses. But at UC San Diego, I feel like there's a really close community, especially for uh, pre-med students. So I am also um, a pre-med student and it's not as cutthroat as people would assume it is. A lot of the classes you take as any student, so long as you're pre-med, you're going to be seeing a lot of the same people and you wind up being able to create some sort of study group, a friend group. You see them in the same organizations, um, in different kinds of like clubs and even events as well. So um, there's also this sort of uh, community. Of, there's this culture of community. Uh, there's this one time where I was in the library and this person it was very late at night in Geisel Library and someone had said, oh, I don't have enough money for a coffee. So if you could Venmo me even like 10 cents, I would really appreciate it. And you could see that people started sending this person like $5, $10, $2, like 10 cents. And it just really showed how much people care around you. It's just, you, it, it's a really good community there. That's a wonderful story. Thanks for sharing. Liz? What's your favorite thing about UC San Diego? Yeah, I hate to really just repeat what everyone else has been saying, but I really do like how you get this like small campus feel in like this huge university. Like going into it, like UC San Diego is a very big school. And I was kind of intimidated by that because my high school was about like a thousand students and UCSD is like over 30,000 students. That was a big shift. And I thought I was gonna be just like this tiny little fish in this really big ocean um, but through like the college system and like different clubs and orgs you find like many different like smaller groups within this big group where like I could be walking around campus like all day and I'm gonna run into somebody I know. I like walk into a lecture hall of like 400 people and I'll see familiar faces from like oh like I play sports with that person and like I used to work with that person or that person lived in my dorm freshman year and everyone's just like super friendly about it like there's people where I'm like I know we know each other and I'm not really sure if they like remember me if they like know we met like once at like a free food event for something like they probably don't remember my name and they'll like come over to me and they'll be like oh Liz like hi how are you or, like especially when I'm giving tours like that's when I see everybody I've ever met on campus and they all want to say hi so I've never gone like a moment without feeling like I had like this community, even when like there's so many people around that you like don't know, but there's so many that you do as well. So you never feel like you're alone. 
Thanks for sharing, Liz. Okay, next question is, what do students do for fun at UC San Diego? Let's go ahead and start with Alicia. All right, there are many things you can do for fun at UC San Diego. As we mentioned, like the first thing we mentioned was that we are super close to the beach and we can go sunbathe and swimming and we can go surfing. There is good surfing teams and a lot of people just interested in surfing and like watching the sea world there as well. Uh, also in campus, uh, we also were mentioning a lot of clubs and organizations you can join and join in events that are also for fun. So I was before mentioning that there are super helpful and informational events there for your job, for your uh, further studies, but there are also fun events and there are different trips that they organize like hiking or maybe some basketball game or something like that. And so that's a good opportunity. Also, there are a lot of different uh, events within campus outside of the um, clubs or organizations, for example, like Sun Gods, different music uh, festivals and things like that. So though usually they would have a lot of music, they would have some food and some kind of like Liz were mentioning, like the free food event or things like that. That's where also you can meet people and just kind of have fun. And uh, that's, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> Thanks, Alicia. Nayeli? Could you repeat the question one more time? Of course. What do students do for fun at UC San Diego? Okay. Um, well, to cover something else, obviously UC, UC San Diego is, there's a lot of things to do. Um, whether you are someone who just likes to relax and maybe do yoga um, on a hill or by sun god to even um, you and your group of friends getting boba at a PC or Price Center. It's really an awesome um, way. I think for me, the most fun I have is taking a shuttle, which is absolutely free, um, taking a shuttle down to um, the Scripps Institution of Oceanography, walking down, getting brunch um, right by Caroline's Seaside Cafe, and just watching surfers. I'm not a surfer. I wish I learned how to surf, um, but it's a lot of fun to just really hang out with friends and even possibly do bonfires because um, you have the like the soft hot is there. And so I think that's been one of the funnest things to do at UC San Diego just because you're so close to the water that even if you didn't want to um, go into the water you could definitely sunbathe or even play frisbee and that's um, what a lot of my friends do. And so we will um, do that as like a distressor even during finals week, you'll see a lot of students out there um, just enjoying the beach because it's a great way to just relax, but also you can get your studies in. So I think um, it's really awesome to just have those, those resources to you um, and have that community to just go out and do things. And you'll always have people, um, clubs and orgs, donating things to students. And I think that's been the funnest because I'm able to like go to the food pantry and like get food when I'm feeling hungry or um, just again, ride the water. So that's been really nice. Thanks, Nayeli. Danny? Yeah, so one of the fun things about UC San Diego is there's always something going on. And I think the most, I think the biggest problem that I have is not having enough time to go to all of these different events. So um, some of the events that I've been to that have been put on by some of the organizations or, or clubs is there was a, um, there was an Asian night market put on by the students. And so they set up the Chinese lantern, the, uh, the Chinese lanterns, and they set up these booths, they had performances going on. And this was, I believe, at the end of a week, and um, everyone just kind of came in. And the food was so good. It was made by the students. Uh, there were desserts. There were actual like, I think there were like, there was meat being cooked as well. It was so good. And then another thing that I was able to go to, um, sometimes there are these more personalized concerts that happen on campus at UCSD, um, at least before the lockdown, all of that. And so I went, to, I went and I was able to see Estelle with probably less than like 300 people. And that was the greatest time I've ever had. It was technically my first concert ever and being able to be in such a small venue was really, really exciting. And if not something on the lower, on the lower scale, uh, the, I believe, um, Asian association or organization was able to put on this uh, Asian dessert tasting. And so when I showed up, I didn't know anyone there. And that was the fun part about it. We all got to sit at different tables 
And after every round, you had to communicate with the people at your table and try to guess where the snack was from, what the snack was called. And then at the very end, there were so many snacks left over that they said, it's a free for all. Go ahead and take as much snacks as you'd like. So it just goes to show that you can be in a room for, full of absolute strangers and come out with, you know, best friends for life. Thanks, Danny. Liz, anything to add? Yeah, I will put in, there is so much to do on campus, but another great thing about UC San Diego is you have access to like bus routes and stuff. So going into like La Jolla or like downtown San Diego is really easy. And one of my personal things to do, I love going and like trying new foods. And there's so many like great restaurants and places to go where like me and my friends would just like on any weekend be like, okay, like what kind of food do we want? And then we would just like look and find a new restaurant and like go and get it. So whether that was like going out and getting tacos or going down to Convoy and getting like ramen, there's always like something to do, some like little adventure to take. And oftentimes like different student orgs will uh, put together like little excursions off campus. So they'll like organize it, they'll provide transportation. So even if you don't know where to go, there's somebody like pointing you in the right direction being like, hey, this could be a cool thing to check out. Um, so there's always something to find to do. Great, thank you. Danny, I know you talked a little bit about snacks. So I wanted to ask you all about the food scene at UC San Diego. Can you all describe and tell us about your favorite dining hall or restaurant on campus? And let's go ahead and start with Alicia. Yeah, there are definitely tons to try and tons that you can go around and those are quite close. Oh, well, our campus is big, but it's all possible to reach uh, those dining locations. So we have uh, different ones. Uh, the ones that are on the Price Center, they're like, there are about 12 uh, very popular chain restaurants, like for example, Subway, Panda Express, things like that. Um, and also we have Starbucks. Also we have dining halls that are also sometimes specialized in terms of food, like you can get burgers, you can get tacos, you can get some other food that you would like. And I guess my favorite place to dine was Bistro, which is located at the village that was used to be a transfer housing. And they would serve cool sushi. And I really liked eating sushi when I was back at home in Russia. We, of course, Russia is not a home for sushi primarily, but I really liked uh, eating them with friends. And so they have those. And that was a great nostalgic feeling for me that as I can go with friends and still do that here as well. And I guess, yeah, and also when you are at the classes, usually different, we have different locations all over the campus and they're, they're always with close proximity. So you can go reach and always grab a snack or a meal or anything like that, a burger and just go uh, to your class like that. I usually don't prefer eating in class, but there is always a possibility for you if you get very hungry and that's great. <laughs> Thanks, Alicia. Nayeli, anything to add? Yeah, um, you covered a lot, but uh, something that I really do enjoy, um, just Price Center, it's super central to campus, and so it makes things easier to just, like, hang out with friends and, like, grab food. So I've had a lot of boba dates um, when I can't, like, get off campus, and I absolutely love milk tea. I never tried it until I got to UC San Diego, and so milk tea and boba was, like, my go-to snack. Um, but they also have really awesome options. I love to go to... Um, what is it, Roots? So Roots is in, uh, located in Muir College and it is, I believe it's a vegetarian um, restaurant. And so it makes, I, for me, I'm not vegetarian, but I've always wanted to try it. And so um, being able to have like fish, fishless tacos and I love their um, sweet potato fries with their um, vegan cheese is a really awesome combination. And so um, that has been like my go-to place and just because I like live in Muir College um, these past two years it's been nice to just grab a snack to go but they're always changing the menus um, in every every dining hall so it makes life so much easier especially if you're living on campus just because sometimes if you're having like the same food over and over again you can kind of get tired of it sometimes but um, that's why they're always changing the menus and you have so many options to go to each one of the dining halls which um, for me is something that I enjoy and so being able to try new foods and um, also cherish really good food like um, Alicia said with sushi and going to the bistro I absolutely enjoy um, those sit-in restaurants so it's been nice and they take dining dollars too for um, those dining halls which makes things so much easier. 
Great, thanks. Danny? Yes, as you know, I can go on about food forever. Um, one of my favorite places is also Bistro, and if not, it's the market right next to it. You can grab a snack, you can grab an ice cream cone, but one of my favorite ice cream places is the Bistro. They have this amazing green tea ice cream that I would recommend to absolutely anyone. You have to at least go once. Um, and if not, on the more central part of campus is uh, the PC Center. And so, as Alicia said, you have more of like the commercialized food places. And then there are some places that are like specific for the campus itself. One of my favorite places is Shogun, which is on the second floor of the PC Center right above the PC Theater. And I absolutely love getting like my Asian food there. I will get sushi. Um, sometimes if I'm at Geisel Library, I will leave my things with my friends, go and get a snack, which is a few California rolls and then come back with a meal. <laughs> so it's, um, it's really nice. And then there's also Sunshine Market in the PC Center, which is kind of like a 7-Eleven uh, sort of feel. You can get coffee, you can get a little bit of grocery shopping done there. Sometimes you can get bagels in there as well. So it's really up to what you need. And for the most part, they will have um, all of your necessities. Wonderful, thanks. Liz? Yeah, I think everyone pretty much covered it. Um, I will mention there are a lot of really great places to get coffee on campus. So a little bit different from the like food side. Um, but my personal favorite place to get coffee is in Muir Woods, which is in the middle of Muir. It's like a really cute feel. They're always like playing music um, and you can buy like Muir like, gear and stuff. I'm not even in Muir College, but I own like a Muir Woods sweatshirt because I thought it was cute and so I bought it. Um, so that's really great. There's the Art of Espresso coffee cart, also great. There is Audrey's, which is in the library. So if you're like, they're studying and you need to like fuel up on some caffeine, I recommend there as well. Um, really, you can't go wrong. There's something different everywhere. So you can like try something new. Um, you don't like, Nyla, you're saying you don't really get in that rut of having to eat the same thing like every single day. There's like tons of options. Thanks everyone. Now I'm hungry. Okay, next question is, what is your favorite class you've taken at UC San Diego? Let's go ahead and start with Alicia. All right, so this is a very great question and I, I really love answering this one. Of course, it's also difficult because I've taken so many classes that just taught me so many perspectives and a lot of knowledge within the field that I'm interested in, which is psychology. But my favorite class, I guess, was a cognitive psychology class, which was the first one that I took here as a psychology class, I took it together with developmental, which is also a great class, but I really liked it as it was very informational and cognitive psychology is something I'm really interested in. And what's fun about this class is that the teacher was amazing. Uh, she explained so many topics that, are, that were difficult, but the way she explained was, uh, uh, was very uh, understandable to me. And even though like, I'm an international student, sometimes I have difficulties with language, she would be very, very responsive to my emails and meeting office hours, things like that. And also the fun thing about this the class is that it was held in the cinema that we have here. So there is this kind of story that we have a cinema on campus and it is a cinema by uh, night and by day we use it as a lecture hall. And so that was the most comfortable lecture for, hall for me. So I would come in and sit in, in very comfortable chairs it would be like a whole cinema and I was, it was my first quarter and I was not understanding like, wow, is this like every lecture hall like this in America? And so this kind of impression and atmosphere overall, I met a lot of people there and a lot of knowledge, professor, it was, everything was great about this class. And I guess that's why it was my favorite. Thanks, Alicia. And can you kind of explain um, what other things the students can do at the cinema? Yeah, so there are many performances, right? So you can, uh, if you, an interesting thing is that if you uh, would like a date, that's also a great uh, kind of location for that because it's very close and it is also uh, open for students. And so you can view movies also in that area. They sometimes show like projected movies as well. Nearby, it's a price center that we've talked about before as well with all the dining locations. So you can grab food there as well. And yeah, in, in the day, it's a great cinema, uh, it's a great lecture hall. And yeah, a lot of presentations uh, were, holding, were held there, a lot of different classes. 
that's what I know if uh, other speakers also know like some kind of activities that uh, are held in cinema that would be great I'm sure there are so many of them thanks Alicia Nayeli what's your favorite class uh, one of the most interesting classes I've taken uh, the well in the four years has been um, history of the modern sport uh, it was a class taught by a uh, professor Robert Edelman and I didn't know who this person was at first like I didn't I was like oh you know it's just a regular like professor I mean these professors are really cool just in general but I was like hmm this is interesting so before going to class I did some of my research and I found out that he's like this really awesome professor who um, does interviews with like super famous like professional soccer players and hockey and all these different sports. And I thought it was really, really awesome to get the chance to take his class because his class was literally just talking about the history of football, which um, for the United States is considered the like soccer. And so being able to just sit in a class with someone who has interacted with um, one of the best soccer players in the world, Pele, for those that know soccer, um, was something really, really awesome. And to get to like learn the stories and um, being able to just do a lot of the readings and watching videos um, with a professor was really, really exciting. And it was something that I actually like grew to love soccer at the end of that class. And it was one of the most weirdest classes I've taken because I wasn't I'm political science like although soccer has some politics in it it's not like huge and you're not gonna have an entire class on soccer I had the opportunity to do that so that was really really awesome and I'm really glad I got to um, hang out with a professor who actually like ended class early I think it was just a couple days early to go um, to I think it was Russia for the Olympics uh, because he had like tickets and was able to just go in and was like, yeah, so-and-so invited me. And I was like, wow, this is really awesome. So he got to host, um, we had class, but it was like online. And so it was really awesome to be able to just be with someone who's like super famous, but also get to learn soccer. That's wonderful. Thanks, Nayeli. Danny, your favorite class? My favorite class is, okay, so I am a science nut. I absolutely love science. <laughs> so one of my favorite classes is the one that I'm taking right now, I believe. Um, and it's a human reproduction class. And so I'm starting to get to know about all of the different functions of like um, the different sexual organs, as well as all of the different hormones that go into play, um, the balances that your body has to has to play out in order to make sure that you are a healthy individual capable of having children. Now, uh, it won't be like Nayeli where, you know, this suddenly isn't making me want to have a baby right now. <laughs> but it's definitely interesting to see the inner, inner workings of what's happening to us on a daily. Thanks, Danny and Liz, your favorite class. I think my favorite class that I've taken was a three hour night class. It was a sociology class about the Holocaust. And I was taking it for part of my like general education requirements and I thought it sounded interesting. Um, and so I like, I went in and my professor was like super knowledgeable and like everything, like this is basically what like he did exactly for his thesis for his PhD. Um, and there was like two things like especially like aside from course material about it that I found really interesting and like beneficial. Um, he, like, my professor taught me outside of just, like, the course material, the dedication that a lot of these professors at, like, UC San Diego have, because I had a question for him, like, one night after class, and he asked me if he, if, like, we could talk about it, like, the following week, and I was totally understanding, but it was because he was getting on a flight, because he flew down to San Diego every week to teach that class. He lived in Berkeley, um, had been retired, but, like, wanted to keep teaching. And so he would just like fly down Wednesday morning, have his office hours, like two hours before class started, like have class from six to nine. And then he would get on a flight that left at like 1030 back to Berkeley, which was just like insane to me that someone could have that much passion for like what they're teaching. Um, and it also showed me a lot, like I was living on campus at the time. So I had like a lot of the people, like a lot of fellow like first and second years, but having a night class showed me like the, a bunch of different students that like, go to our community and aren't just like your traditional like live on campus like classes during the day like people who had full-time jobs and were still 
coming into like campus and they had to take these classes that were like only offered at night. Um, so that was like just a fun experience. Not only was the class like super interesting in and of itself, but just like the people I met through it, which was like was also amazing and really like out of my comfort zone because like none of these people were like human development majors like me, like a lot of sociology majors, a lot of political science. So I got to see a lot of different perspectives on the same class. Thanks, Liz. We received a question. Uh, what are the differences between the colleges? Um, so I don't know if someone wants, only one person wants to answer this question. Um, Nayeli, can you do it? Because you talked about the college system a little bit earlier. Yeah, so um, the difference between each one of the colleges. So like I mentioned before, um, the sixth college system or the seventh college system is really there to create that community. And so every major is with, represented within every um, college. The only thing and the only real difference is kind of the philosophies as well as the general education that's accompanied with your college. So um, each one of the colleges uh, has their different philosophy. For Eleanor Roosevelt College, it's the international scholar. So what that means is um, a lot of the general education um, and your writing sequence is gonna be dealing with um, what it is to be an international scholar. So it may be um, taking sociology classes, language classes, everything to encompass that international scholar. And the writing sequence accompanied with that um, is making of the modern world, MMW. And um, that writing sequence is learning from the beginning of um, Earth being formed to um, now and how everything's been changing. And so it's been, it's a really interesting uh, sequence, definitely. It is hard, but I think that's something that is unique about each one of the colleges. So when you're applying, you have the opportunity to rank them uh, one to seven, one being your most favorite to seven being your not so much favorite. And so being able to rank them, it gives you um, kind of a sense of authority of knowing exactly kind of where you want to go. But also, um, at the end of the day, it's not compl all of your decision. Your um, admissions officers are looking and seeing what's the best um, suitable college for you. And so um, giving your faith and trust in that into that is definitely helpful. But um, e along with like the differences with each one of the colleges is um, a lot of the events. So Eleanor Roosevelt, talking about MMW, we have our MMW blowout, which is this huge event just for Eleanor Roosevelt College students where we're really celebrating the end of um, taking MMW classes. And so we have, we used to have this like, um, what is it? Kind of like throw, throw like, I, I think it's like water dunking your professor, your MMW professors. So professors would um, sit down in the chair and you'd have to hit the, hit the tennis ball a lot or the target. Along with that, um, you have your Mirror College where um, I grew up, uh, Mirror College, you have the pumpkin drop where uh, during like Halloween time, they get this huge pumpkin and they go up to 11 flights and they throw a pumpkin and there's candy gushing out like a pinata. And so you have these um, fun activities. Now, not not all activities are limited to those specific students in those specific colleges. Um, you have events all over the place, seven times more events. Therefore, you can enjoy those seven times of events. So it's been really nice to um, be able to have that. So you have your little space where you have the people in your community um, where you're able to grow and take those classes, but then you can also adventure out and meet new people in different colleges. And that's something that um, those are the major differences with um, the six colleges. Um, I don't know if anyone else would like to add. Thanks, Nayeli. We can go ahead and move on to the next question. Um, can one of you talk about living on campus and what that experience was like? Alicia, do, can we start with you? Yeah, all right. I've been living on campus for already a year and now I'm in summer housing, which is also living on campus, but I just recently moved to a different location to Ravel College. And I used to live before in the village, which was housing for transfer students. And what that experience was for me, it was honestly great. I have so many memories from it. I met amazing people who were my roommates and roommates and apartment mates. We hanged out a lot and we kind of connected, which was amazing. Also, I really liked the community. So in terms of, uh, I think uh, we sometimes cover on these panels that uh, 
transfers sometimes are grouped together and that allows for a lot of diversity because people are coming from different places and you have uh, but it, they all are connected by the fact that they are transfer students, so there is a lot to talk about and a lot of share between each other. Also, living on campus is also great because it gives you a great access to all the activities that you might be interested to be involved in. Those are, of course, the classes, so you don't have to wake up super early to get to class. And also that gives you an ability to just go anywhere you would like in a matter of seconds if you get an interview or if you get a club meeting, you can always attend and participate and that's just great. I still though got a bicycle because our campus is quite large and uh, getting a bicycle was one of the best decisions for me because I really like bicycles and it's also, uh, it, it gets you to class in a matter of seconds and yeah, that's, that's a great recommendation I think would be. And overall, yes, living on campus I, I would definitely recommend. And uh, also, there are, uh, in, it's comfortable also in terms of being able to access food services as well. There are different dining halls around the campus areas, different cafes uh, you can get where you can get coffee or breakfast or things like that. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> Thanks, Alicia. How about we go with Danny next? Yeah, of course. So I personally have not lived on campus but there was this one time that I did live on campus. So I was a part of the, well, I still am a part of the University Link Medical Science Program. And a part of that component was staying on campus for four weeks. And so me and my cohort got to stay in the Ravala College um, apartments. And so there's a difference between the apartments and the um, residence halls. They're not necessarily dormitories because when we think of dormitories, we think of one giant long hallway with all the rooms on one side and then a communal bathroom for every single one of those people to use. Uh, instead, we have this sort of pod system where you get to spend all of your time and you room with a certain amount of people. It can range from anything um, eight to possibly 14 people uh, when you're in the um, lower division like freshman sophomore um, dorms like the residence halls and then once you become a junior senior sometimes even a sophomore you do get to move into those apartment style where there are less people and then you get to upgrade to a kitchenette which has a fridge an oven uh, and those necessities uh, it was really fun living on campus because everything was so convenient the dining hall was immediately just a few steps away from your apartment, as well as being able to cook and do your necessary things in your apartment as well, such as cooking. And um, you can also clean a little bit if you want to, but whether you live in an apartment or a residence hall, someone is always coming by and cleaning the main, um, the main rooms in those uh, apartments or residence halls. Thanks, Danny. Do you also want to touch on a little bit about being a commuter student and what that experience like is for you? Oh, yeah. So I personally really like being a commuter student. I've been a commuter student since community college. So from my community college, um, from my home to my community college, it would take 15 minutes without any traffic and almost an hour with traffic. Same thing with uh, UCSD. So to go from UCSD, from my house to UCSD, it takes about 20 to 25 minutes without traffic and then almost an hour with traffic. Um, but I've made it a little bit um, as a part of my routine. Um, and so I'll listen to music and I'll think about how my day is gonna be sorted. So I usually will um, think about what's coming next. Okay, I'm taking this class. And then I really wanted to go to that one event that has free food. And so I'm gonna remember to do that. And then just making sure you get on campus on time in order to get parking spaces. So a lot of students will show up to campus a few hours before those big um, time blocks. So typically, if you get to campus at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock, you won't really find any parking spaces because a lot of students have classes during those times and they will show up earlier to get those parking spots. But if you, if you show up maybe eight o'clock in the morning, maybe even nine o'clock, you're more than likely to find a parking space. And then from there, you can take your shuttle and uh, those shuttles take a lot of people to fill up. 
So you wouldn't necessarily have to worry about missing out on a shuttle to get to the main campus because there's always shuttles rolling out 10 to 15 minutes. Thanks, Danny. Liz, anything to add about living on campus? Yeah, I'll say I lived on campus my freshman and sophomore year, so I got that uh, residential suite style living where I was living with 16 other girls, two of whom I shared a room with, and then uh, 14 others just like sharing a bathroom and a living room with. And I also had an apartment that I only shared with three other people, which was like a completely different experience, but both like super valid, super great. Uh, I made some of my closest friends living on campus. My original freshman year roommate and I just rented our first apartment together. So that's gonna be super fun. Um, I will test on that. If you don't want to live on campus, like one or both years, there is plenty of off-campus housing, like right around like apartment complexes um, that like, that I won't say cater, like other people live there as well, but they're like aware of the fact that there's like university students trying to like find apartments. They're friendly to that. There's buses that go straight from those apartments right to campus. So even if you aren't living like right in the middle of everything, you still can have that access to just like come and be a part of it, which is also great for me. I live right on a bus line now. I don't have a car, so I never need a car to go anywhere, which is great. I can take the bus straight to campus. Um, but yeah, there's totally tons of benefits living on, off, wherever you decide to live. There's that campus community and it's a great time. Thank you, Liz. Okay, our next question. I kind of want to help our webinar attendees visualize campus. So can you all describe your favorite place to be on campus? Let's go ahead and start with Alicia. Well, I guess it's again a difficult question because <laughs> there are so many great places on campus. Just I don't know, amazing uh, that there are so many of them. My favorite would be, I think there is a, a little place in terms of on the north part of campus. So if you visualize our map, if you have it in front of you, you would have uh, Roosevelt College. And in there, uh, there is a like a little, uh, I'm not sure if it's directly on the map or if it's easy to find, but there is this kind of calm environment. It's surrounded by little lecture halls. And it also has a small fountain. And sometimes uh, birds come and drink from that fountain. It's just a, such a peaceful place. Even when it has a lot of students, when there is an exam, for example, and we all kind of are getting together to enter the lecture hall, for exam, people are behaving there very calmly. Everybody is quiet and it's just a peaceful atmosphere there always. And I really, really like that place personally. But also there are many spaces such as library that many people enjoy studying at, uh, center of our campus, library walk, things like that are usually the favorite places because it's just a lively environment there. There are lots of uh, also clubs, different organizations presenting themselves there that people can connect with. And we also have sometimes rooftops, which you can uh, get and relax at. That's uh, one of my favorite places of my friend. It's just like, it gives you a great, it's located in the village. So also north part of the campus. And you can just get on that rooftop. Uh, there are some places, there are small tables for you to put your coffee at or pizza, anything like that. And you can view the ocean from there and watch sunset, sunrises if you wish, and if you're an early bird. And yeah, that's, and I'm sure there are many more than I just mentioned, and there are a lot of them. Thank you, Alicia. Nayali? I think one of my favorite places um, is located in Mir. Um, it's called the middle of, of middle of Mir, which is mom. I wanted to say mom first, but middle of Mir. And it's a coffee shop and it's a really, really cute coffee shop. The aesthetics are there if that's something that you're looking for. But the people are so amazing. And I think um, for me as someone who like in, needs to like get out of their room to study or like concentrate and sometimes um, get a coffee break because I love coffee. Um, Middle of Mirror is some is somewhere where I'd love to go. Um, not only that, but they have areas to, um, first of all, they have a piano. So if you love working with pianos, you can definitely use it there. Um, they have music going and it's those like coffee vibes. I don't have, don't go to very many coffee shops. And so I'm um, getting that kind of coffee vibe was something that I was like looking for in, um, in at UC San Diego. And so um, being able to just sit there and just like 
um, be with people was something that was really um, interesting to me. Along with that, one of my other favorite places is um, the Women's Center. Their couches are absolutely comfortable and I love going through um, their stu a gender studies library um, where I could just like check out a book. And so I got to read the book the last time I was there, which was like the Latin Bible studies which was a completely different book um, where it had a lot of like self-empowerment and self-love um, questions and um, being able to just read that in these like beautiful comfy couches and having uh, my cup of tea was something that I absolutely enjoy and it's been a very peaceful um, experience for me. Thank you, Nayeli. Danny, what's your favorite place on campus? My favorite spot on campus, I believe, is the Black Resource Center. So the Black Resource Center is one of the many resource centers we have on campus, um, such as the Raza Resource Center. We also have the veteran, the Student Veterans Resource Center that's in the uh, Student Center. And so the Student Center houses a majority of our resource centers, and then the other resource centers are scattered about on campus. But the reason I like it so much is as soon as you walk into the resource center, they have these super comfy couches. And the way that the couches are structured is it's kind of in this circular fashion to where when you sit down, you're always facing someone if someone is already sitting in that area. So it creates, um, it creates dialogue with people that you never would have really approached by yourself. They also have a kitchenette. I'm the type of person who brings food a lot, snacks, um, and meal prepped, uh, with meals as well. So I know that I can come in, drop off my food, make sure to put your food on it, obviously, make sure to put your name on it, obviously, and be able to come back in a few hours and then be able to heat it up right there as well, and then eat and maybe even participate in some discussions. I also really like it because it, I feel like it's a very central part of campus to where a majority of my classes are. So a lot of my classes will be on the Ravel College campus and the Warren College campus, and it's a really good place to be in the middle of. And then right below it is the Triton, uh, the Triton Food Pantry, which as UCSD students, you have access to the Triton Food Pantry and the Triton Food Pantry. Uh, you get a certain number of points every week. You can either use the points or you don't necessarily need to use the points either, and you can get fresh produce. Sometimes you can get cereals, pastas, anything that you need and you can get a certain quantity of it and you don't have to worry about having to spend money that maybe you don't have or maybe you won't be getting paid until the next week and you can use this on a weekly basis as well so that's something that i also love to utilize thank you danny liz all right i think um if i had to say what my favorite place is it would have to be the like courtyard that's behind um, 64 North, which is one of our like sit down restaurants in Ravel. Uh, my spring quarter of my first year, I had 8 a.m.s every single day, Monday through Thursday in Ravel, which was like a 20 minute walk from where I was living. So I didn't really want to like walk all the way out there and then walk all the way home. So I would just go back there and kind of camp out. They have really comfy like outdoor couches. Um, tables there's right next to a dining hall so I would go in and like grab fries and then come back and sit outside with my friends um, there's really pretty like um, vines hanging from things so it's just like a really nice atmosphere to just kind of sit and not a lot of people go back there so if you're trying to get things done uh, there's like tons of quiet to like study if you want to go back there with friends you can do that too also there's a conference room right there and sometimes they'll have food at their conferences and then they won't want to take it back with them so on multiple occasions i've had like professors walk out and just be like hey like we have pizza or we have donuts or we have something like do you want it and i'm like yes i don't want to pay for food so then i've gotten yeah like pizza i've gotten drinks i've gotten like all sorts of fun things i had like a thing of orange juice i just took back to my apartment because i wasn't going to drink it all in one sitting uh, so it's definitely the place to be sometimes now that i've told all of you maybe it won't be because now other people will get my free food but it's fine i'll share <laughs> thank you liz it looks like we have time for just one more question. So I know some of you touched on the different resources on campus. So just wanted to see from all of you, what's been a really good resource for you that the campus has offered you. So let's go ahead and start with Alicia. All right. Oh, yes, we have many resource centers 
And uh, for me personally, I guess that's not really a um, resource center, how it's called, but we have an international office that for international students. That was a very great help for me because sometimes all of those visa uh, questions or maybe like all the documents for studying between countries, maybe some stuff like that are very difficult to figure out on your own. And it's great that we have this resource on campus that helps out with this especially and I was I, I remember I attended that office on my very first day when I arrived to take a campus tour with my parents and it was great I just dropped off people helped me out with my questions regarding that because sometimes as I mentioned it could be very stressful and difficult so yeah that was a great uh, that's a great resource on campus for students definitely especially for those who are international and another one that it's not in, for international I guess for me a women's uh, resource center is a great uh, one for me because they sometimes host events like gender buffet or different workshops where you can get a chance to know more about community, about different social um, social aspects. So that's one of the resource centers I would recommend, I guess, from myself personally. But there are many more that you can explore. Thanks, Alicia, Nayeli. Um, one of my favorite resource centers um, has been the Raza Resource Centro. Um, Raza Resource Centro um, is for uh, Latinx and Chicanx students. Um, that is the, the culture, but you are more than welcome to um, go to any resource center that even though you may not identify with that specific identity, you are more than welcome to go, which is something that I've enjoyed um, being part of UC San Diego, is that I'm able to enter um, different resource centers without knowing anything and being able to ask and ask questions and learn um, history. That's something that's very important to me. But um, the Rasa Resource Center, I love going to because as someone who identifies with the Latinx community, it's been a whole, it's been a place or like a home away from home where I'm able to be with people who um, I'm able to, you know, share cultural memes and learn also about the different issues that are occurring in my community. And so it's been really helpful along with that, just the amount of free food given at the Rasa Resource Centro, the amount of, trust me, food is delicious and just studying um, in a community where you're able to also enjoy food. I've been able to go to um, these like talks uh, where they're really serving like um, pan dulce, which is like sweet bread. Um, and so being able to have conversations about um, things that are occurring again in our community and being able to have these discussions with students who also may have the same opinions or may be different in learning from them. I think that's been something that's been really helpful for me. Um, in, the, in addition to that, they also have a lot of clubs and orgs that um, host their meetings there. So it's been easy to just go um, to the Rasa Resource Centro and also be part of a organization or a club that's that are hosting meetings there so that's been something that's been really awesome and also it's been it's central and a lot of the resource centers tend to be central to campus so it's making easy it's easy access for students to be able to also be part of things and learn but yeah thank you Danny one of my favorite resources at UC San Diego is definitely the tutoring center so Tutoring, I know it sounds kind of boring like, compared to what everyone else says, but tutoring is absolutely a necessity at UC San Diego, especially uh, myself as a transfer student. So you're going to be faced with classes that are very, very content heavy. Sometimes you're writing papers that you don't necessarily know how to format or you need more practice when it comes to maybe your organic chemistry class. And so there is OASIS, which is the Office of Academic instruction and um, academic instruction and no <laughs> academic services and instructional uh, services I'm sorry <laughs> and so there's that's one place where you can get uh, bi-weekly tutoring and I did that for my physics uh, during quarantine actually so it was very interesting communicating with my uh, tutors through Zoom, but it was absolutely uh, helpful when I was able to do that. There's also tutor tutoring in the first floor of the um, Geisel Library. And there you can do drop-in tutoring. And I found that to be some of the most helpful things. Sometimes I've had a test coming up and I don't have time to make an appointment. I can just pop in, say hello, and then put my name down. And then I'm immediately put into a group of tutors and they're all helping me out. So that's 
one of the great things that I love about UCC. Thank you, Danny. And last but not least, Liz. Yeah, I would have to say uh, my favorite resource from uh, for campus would be the LGBT Resource Center. Uh, when I first got to campus, it was great because it created the sense of like community and belonging. But my favorite thing about it is not only do I have like the sense of community and camaraderie with the people there, but they're constantly doing presentations about like LGBTQ plus issues that people aren't necessarily aware of. So while I still get that sense of community, I'm also always like learning more things and informing myself on how to be inclusive to like others, not just like those like me. Uh, so I have like that comfort zone, but they're also constantly pushing you to learn more and like challenge what you like might think and like see things from a different perspective, which is also a great resource to have, especially in college. Great, thank you. Well, big round of applause to all of you for answering those awesome questions. I really appreciate your time and all of your perspectives and you sharing it with our the students in the webinar today. So just wanted to end by sharing our contact information. So if you have additional questions after this webinar, um, our contact information is on the screen. So our website is on there, admissions.ucsd.edu. Uh, if you have a specific question that you want to receive an answer, um, via email, you can go ahead and email us at personalreply at ucsd.edu. We also are offering one-on-one -on -one admissions advising with admissions officers. So if you have any questions on first year requirements or transfer requirements, go ahead and book an appointment um, with our admissions officers and they can go ahead and help you out with all of your questions. And then last but not least, this is a Triton Talk. You participated in a Triton Talk webinar today. We are offering many more Triton Talks um, throughout the next coming months. So go ahead and sign up for additional Triton Talks um, by following the link on the screen. So admissions.ucsd.edu slash Triton Talks. Again, just wanted to thank the panelists and thank you all for joining us today to learn more about UC San Diego. We'll see you soon. Bye.